now recording. Hi everyone, welcome to our final pres live presentation for Earth Day Works 2021, the virtual edition. Um, we'd like to thank all of you who have uh, participated, all of you who have been watching the videos, who have shared videos. Um, and uh, we're just really grateful to all of our great community partners that have uh, helped us pull this week off. Um, our presentation uh, this afternoon is with Bill Ulrich, who is a, a teacher at Albright. And he's gonna talk about the periodical cicadas um, that we are expecting to uh, join us in their adult form in the next few weeks. And also about the Berks County Backyard Bird Count and the Bard or Ornithological Club that is celebrating a hundred years um, of being a great naturalist organization in Berks County. Um, so Bill, I'm going to uh, let you get started. And thank you for joining us. Thank you for uh, having me this afternoon. Um, now, most people might remember me from uh, my column that I've written for the, that I wrote for the Reading Eagle for 25 years, um, nature uh, columns that um, dealt with all sorts of environmental issues and mostly birds. Though I've been mostly the, the bird reporter at the, at the Eagle until uh, the last year, but I thought. I, I would talk about three things today. One are the cicadas, two would be the Redding bird count. Uh, I, I've been doing a city of Redding bird count in this COVID era um, as, as a way to just highlight the diversity of, of habitats that really exist in the city of Redding. And the last thing I thought I would get into is the Baird Ornithological Club is celebrating its 100th anniversary this year. And um, I thought I would talk a little bit about Spencer Fullerton Baird, probably the the greatest, one of the greatest naturalists of the 19th century who was born in Reading in the southwest corner of um, Fifth and Washington Streets. And if you go to the m and Bank building there, you'll see a, a large tablet dedicated to uh, Spencer Baird that used to hang on his uh, home before it was all cleared away and now is on the uh, bank building. So I hope everybody can see this, um, this video I did in 2008. Now the 17 year periodical cicadas, we have at least three broods and every once in a while the you know, crazy things happen and, and broods start popping up. And we need to distinguish between the periodical cicada and the dog day cicada. Now, now the Lancaster uh, Conservancy did a really nice program yesterday on the uh, brood 10 um, cicadas. And um, we're, gonna, we're gonna see the um, the, the emergence of the brood 10 cicadas, probably the second week of May. Uh, some people I, I've been seeing have, 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 saw, have seen the, those little holes in the ground where they're starting to emerge in some places. But um, for those of you who don't, haven't seen a cicada, um, periodical cicada, I've, I've made this short video uh, for the brood 14 cicada when it appeared last in 2008. Um, and this was down, the brood 14 cicadas in Berks County are mainly centered in Southern Berks uh, with the sort of hot spot around Joanna Furnace. So I went down to Joanna Furnace and shot this video in 2008, which really now seems an incredibly long time ago, but uh, it's something 46 seconds long. And this will give you the idea of what to listen for because of this periodical cicadas. We all know that dog day cicada whine or, or, or you know, in, 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 that we get in the late summer. We all, that's all very familiar to us, but this cicada has a very distinct um, call and it's really otherworldly in, in many ways. So, you know, turn your volume up and listen, put your ear close to your phone or whatever you listen to. And let's see uh, you, that you can hear this. And here we go.
Now you heard that, that is really when you're in the midst of that, it is loud and it's very, very ethereal, very, mm. and um, you what you that, saw. That is really when you're in the midst of that. When the, um, what, when you saw there was the uh, nymphal shells, what happens is that, you know, they've been underground feeding on roots and things. Then they emerge in those, from those little burrows and they climb to the tops of trees and, or, or sides of trees and they emerge from those nymphal shells um, in, into the wings, the winged creatures with the big red eyes that, that we saw there. Um, one of the things, if you notice with the periodical cicada, there's a W in the veins of the, at the end. Um, and that used to stand, uh, you know, legend has it that it stands for woe, want, and war because the emergence of the cicada was looked at as, as sort of a, a portent of, you know, bad stuff. So hopefully brood 10 doesn't give us a portent of bad stuff since in the last year we've had enough bad stuff. But um, so brood 10, we, that is basically centered, uh, those of you who live in the Pricetown area along Pricetown Road uh, and on sort of like the, um, that end of the Ole Valley, that's where the brood 10 cicada emerges usually is the peak in Berks County. Our other, our other cicada uh, emergencies are brood two, and the last was in 2013, and that's the, the most widespread of, of the ones that, that we have. Um, 2013, that, it was all along the northern Berks County along the Kittatinny Ridge, a very large emergence of uh, periodical cicadas there. And as I mentioned, the 2008 was the last, um, Brood 14, and that was, um, again, at Joanna's Furnace in Southern Berks. So not everybody in Berks County, you know, a lot of times the, uh, the stories that we read or the news reports seem to imply there's gonna be some sort of apocalyptic um, uh, occurrence of cicadas, you know, the biblical proportions uh, descending upon us and, you know, eating us, alive or something, but no, that, that's not the way it happens. And it's a very local, um, localized um, outbreak, uh, outbreaks of the, the cicada, and they're harmless. They're, they're, pretty, they're virtually harmless. And in fact, they, they serve a purpose of sort of like cropping the trees a little bit, like pruning back, because what they'll do is they'll um, climb to the top and the, the nymphs, they'll, they'll, they'll eat some of the the, the tips before laying their eggs and the eggs drop and you know, they hatch and away they go again. Um, so oh, oh, can I interrupt for a quick second? Sure. Um, we have a request to um, play the video again and maybe get the sound turned up a little bit. Okay. They're, they're having a hard time hearing the sound. Okay. I don't know if I can do any better on the sound, but I'll play it again. Oops. Yeah, the Me, sound. they sounded a little bit like a clock. Yeah. There we see the burrows. That's a nymphal shell that's been sh that's shed. There we see the adults with the nymphal shells. We see that W at the end of the, the wing. See the W of that. Bill, can you describe the sound a little bit? Yes, yeah, like we oh, or something like that. You know, it's like but when you get when you get oh goodness. Um well, that's strange. Let's um let's get rid of this. But um, maybe just stop your screen share. Yeah, I, now I lost my. Uh, there we go. Um, yeah, it's kind of like a. It, it's it's almost you know the same thing with spring peepers. When you get close to spring peepers, you hear the individual peeper, but when you are step back and hear the chorus of spring peepers, 
you get a sort of you know jingle bells kind of thing. And so there, there are two levels to the, the cicadas. There's that close up where it's like a and then a, a sort of longer, larger, louder crescendo, you know, of, of a chorus of tens of thousands of them at one time gets into like a rumbly kind of background. It's really, it's really, it, it's something, it's, it's one of those spectacles of nature that I hope everybody gets a chance to witness. I mean, we look at, a lot of people get are really into the snow goose migration, for instance, at Middle Creek as a real spectacle of nature. And of course that is. And, and we are, are really witnesses in, in Berks County here to many such uh, types of, of spectacles uh, of migration and, and, and other things. But the snow goose migration is just one of those great spectacles that you have to experience once. Same way with the periodical cicadas. Um, as I said, they're extremely local in Berks County. So uh, if you don't live near where they are, Brood 10, you know, you might drive up and down Pricetown Road with your windows open and down into Oldley Valley with your windows open and just see if you can hear the, uh, the cicadas, you know, on a sunny day in May, the third week of May, perhaps, you know, when they might, might emerge and be at their peak. So anybody else have any questions about that or any thoughts or ideas? Let me just double check. Okay. No, I think we're good right now. Okay, sounds good. Um, the next thing I wanted to uh, spend some time with is uh, my uh, city of Reading bird count. Now, you know, a lot of us, a lot of people who, who are into bird watching might think that, you know, you have to go someplace special to, to watch birds. And once again, Berks County is blessed because, you know, we have Hawk Mountain Sanctuary. We have great destinations. We have Blue Marsh Lake, which is a great destination, and Lake Ontolani, which has been for almost 100 years a, a very important destination for water, waterfowl, waterfowl um, other migratory birds, resident bird species, um, nesting bird species, and for bird watchers. Lake Ontolani has been observed ever since its beginning. Um, by members of the Baird Ornithological Club, which I hope to talk about um, in last. But I, since I live in the city of Reading and since uh, you know COVID came in and everything, I decided, well, I'm just gonna limit my bird watching activities to the city of Reading, to the physical boundaries. I'm just gonna allow that arbitrary physical boundary to be restrictive of what, what I, um, uh, do with my bird watching. So, uh, and you know what? There are just so many great places in the city of Reading to, to watch birds from, you know, we go right from the, um, the Schuylkill River up until the, uh, up, to, up to the top of Mount Penn. And um, so, you know, I can start there. And one of the really great places is the uh, Schuylkill River Trail that goes through Reading. I, I normally like to go between the Penn Street Bridge and the Buttonwood Street Bridge. There's a, the water backs up a little bit. There's a little bit of a riffle dam or some down, downstream further that the water gets a little, a little bit deeper and a little less, less rapid in, the, in, the, um, in its flow. And that sort of lends itself well to uh, some waterfowl. Wood ducks, I've, I've had as many as seven pairs of wood ducks in that stretch. Um, I had a bufflehead uh, pair that was there over the course of the, the winter. Uh, we don't really get a lot of waterfowl that sets down on the river anymore because, you know, we have Blue Marsh and we have Lake Onalani and waterfowl, you know, high overhead, they're going to head to there. But there are some, you know, surprises that we get with the, uh, uh, along the river. I mean, the river is a major flyway. Uh, just last week, uh, I was uh, bird watching in the rain. I didn't go out this morning because I, I was just like, oh, the rain. Nobody likes to bird watch in the rain, but that's when you can see the birds and uh, see some interesting birds. And last week, along the river there, along uh, between the, the two bridges, I was walking along and I flushed five black crowned night herons. Now, the black crowned night heron has had a, a fascinating history in Brooks County because 
In the state of Pennsylvania, there are only perhaps a half a dozen breeding colonies of black crown night herons. And there used to be in Berks County for well over a hundred years, at least one breeding colony of black crown night herons. Uh, they had moved, uh, moved around some. They used to be in the Noldy forest area in the Spring Township area. And then they, they migrated over into the to the wine missing area, then West Lawn area. And believe me, people, and they were had no problems nesting in, in the suburbs. Um, and people didn't like it because, you know, they're herons. And one of the interesting parts about these herons is that they nest in trees and treetops. And there's a bit of cognitive dissonance, dissonance for anybody who's thinking of a heron as a wading bird, but yet there they are in the tops of trees nesting. And this is what was happening in West Reading. And I believe at one point West Reading chopped down the tops of the top some of the trees to discourage the nesting. But the uh, the issue here is they are a federally federally protected species, so you can't really hassle them. But the uh, the colony had moved around and, and it was last over in Wine Missing Hills, in um, in some of the neighborhood areas uh, there. It moved over to the a row of pines in Arborvita near Burke's. Uh, Technical Institute. And then what happened was the great hailstorm of 2014, and that just pelted that nesting area. Now, you know, the I don't think any birds were destroyed during that hailstorm. I think they got out of Dodge really quickly um, when, when the hail or when the storm came up. But that was the last time that black crowned night herons have nested in Berks County. Um, in, had broken that almost 100 year uh, stretch of black crowned night herons. So whether black crowned night herons come back, I saw five of them along the river. I, I didn't see them again, but maybe you know, they're looking around. The closest nesting colony, you know, which is absurd when you think about it is, oh, if anybody's gone to the Ephrata hospital, there's a, uh, been for the last 10 or 15 years, a colony um, of nesting black crowned night herons along the one side of the parking area at the effort of the hospital. Once again, these birds pick the strangest places to, uh, to, to go for nesting. So, you know, we walk along the, the, the Schuylkill River Trail. And of course, if we, once we go into Center City, then, then we're into the Peregrine Falcon Territory. And Reading, once again, blessed ever since 2007 to have a nesting pair of Peregrine Falcons. This year, there was some incredible drama involved with the, with the Falcons. I'll get into that in a minute, but the, um, the, there's been one male who has, who has hatched out in 2005 at the Rachel Carson building in Harrisburg, and he's been the consistent male in the downtown Reading Peregrines. But now there have been three females that have, um, and that have been part of the nesting process. Um, in 2014, one, uh, a female that was hatched out of the, um, the uh, the, a bridge between uh, near Columbia over the Schuylkill, I mean the Susquehanna River, a female came in and displaced the, the female that was there um, with the male. That first female wasn't banded, so there was no idea where, where she came from. Uh, but now this spring, there's quite a bit of drama. Uh, observers at the nest and the game commission discovered a two-year-old female peregrine falcon uh, was at the nest site, was dead at the nest site. It must have been killed by the, the resident peregrine falcon female. The, fe the females very aggressively defend the nest. Um, and then consequently, the female that had been there since 2014 was killed in the collision with a building, well, well undoubtedly in some pursuit by a, another female that, uh, that started to take over the territory. So now downtown, there hasn't, the previous female, the female from 2014 who was killed um, uh, defending the nest, I think had, had laid eggs, uh, three or four eggs. The eggs have been abandoned and the new female, although there's been some mating with the male, hasn't laid any eggs yet. So this may be a year that we don't have um, a successful nesting in, in, in Reading of peregrine falcons. So we'll be trying to keep our eyes open with what happens with the peregrine falcon population population in Reading. So now we go up um, 
Penn Street. We can go right up Penn Street to City Park, and uh, I walk around there quite quite a lot. Uh, they did a lot of good work with the uh, band shell to have some native plantings there, and we see, um, you know, um, red winged blackbirds now are nesting there, and and I, I occasionally see wood ducks in City Park, um, and then. Yeah, you know, the some of the South Ninth Street. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows who, you know, the Beer Cave, you know, the, the Deppen Brewery Beer Cave is there on South Ninth Street, um, near on that side of Never Sink Mountain. And what we have, you know, along Nanny Goat Hill there, the cemetery, that's always a good spot. And even walking down to the dead end at South Ninth Street, you now I've seen hermit thrushes in the winter. I've, I've had that. I saw a kestrel there. I got my city of Reading kestrel there. Uh, along that spot. So that's always a kind of a productive walk and it's, it's a nice walk back that way. So oh, we have kestrels in Reading? Yes. Like yes. in the city, that's super cool. Um, when yeah. I was doing my undergrad at Alvernia, I got to do the kestrel banding with uh, Jim Cusaris. And of mm -hmm. course we were up on the north kind of ends of Reading going up towards Kutztown and um, they're just amazing birds and the yeah chicks have the greatest personalities. Yeah. This yeah. little little comedians. Right. Yeah. Kestrels are kind of in having some problems right now. Um, yeah, they, they, always... they, really, they really like edge habitats and mm -hmm. they don't have as much habitat as they need. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, predation and, and things like that. They're they're really being stressed right now uh, by, you know, ha you know, habitat loss and, and things like that. But yeah, uh, in fact, I've gotten all three falcons. I've got Peregrine Falcon Merlin in Charles Evans Cemetery. Uh, in fact, uh, Michelle and I and my wife and I were just there taking a walk. Um, I didn't see anything new there, but Charles Evans Cemetery is, is another one of those Central Park-like oases that, um, that are just a bird magnet. Um, I've, I've seen Merlin there in, in Charles Evans Cemetery. So I've had all three falcons, Peregrine, Merlin, and um, Kestrel in the city of Reading. Um, but, you know, the best parts, uh, especially now with the uh, spring migration, the warbler migration, one of the hottest spots, believe it or not, in the county during the spring warbler migration is Skyline Drive up by Drenkel Field. I only go as far as the city of Reading, but, you know, the List Road intersection of Skyline Drive is a real hot spot for migrating warblers when there's a, a fallout. And, um, across from Drenkel Field and, and up to the edge of the, the city line, um, up that way is really a prime location for migrating warblers um, down, down to the pagoda. So even walking up that way, um, up from the, walking from the pagoda up to Drenkel Field is really in the early spring or in, during the spring migration, um, early May to, to late May is really one of the great warbler habitats in, in Berks County for migrant warblers. Um, and then I'll, you just need to walk down through Agleman Park um, up along uh, the pond there has been drained. And so it's kind of like a big mud flat now, but uh, sometimes I, for instance, a solitary sandpiper there and killdeer there um, at the drain pond at Agleman's. And then I walk around the back, I, you know, I had wide-eyed vireo in the back and you know, all, a lot of forest birds are, are at Eggleman Park and around there. And then you could walk down the old Gravity Railroad along the Rose Valley Creek. And I just had Louisiana water thrush along the Rose Valley Creek yesterday. And I was hoping I'd be able to get that. Louisiana water thrush is a bird of very special concern in, in the state of Pennsylvania because they like only um, pure free flowing streams. And it's good to know that the Rose Valley Creek, uh, which goes from the back of Eggleman Park down into Pandora Park, then underground through the city and, and exits um, into the Schuylkill River down by the Canal Street Park. But to know that that's, that stream is, is conducive to, to attracting a, a species of concern like the Louisiana water thrush. So, you know, you can walk down through, down the gravity trail into Mineral Spring Park, following the Rose Creek Park, down into Pandora Park. And I always like to walk over into the Allenbach Cemetery, get some bluebirds in Allenbach. Although bluebirds, you know, they're throughout the city. I see them up in um, up in Eggleman's. I see them at Charles Evans Cemetery, and I think they've they've pretty much taken um, to natural nesting cavities. Uh, 
there have been a lot of people who've been doing a lot of work with uh, bluebird houses. And I think now with the maturing of the forests, oh, I, I have to say too, up in Mount Penn, it's, it's pileated woodpecker territory par excellence. So all the woodpeckers are up there except for redheaded, but you know, hairy woodpecker, downy, um, flicker, uh, red bellied, and, and the most spectacular forest bird of all, the, the pileated woodpecker. Um, so if, if you're, if people haven't been able to see a pileated woodpecker, just go up to the pagoda and walk some of the trails below the pagoda and um, you'll eventually see one or hear one or both. And um, so, I mean, the city of Reading is just fantastic when it comes down to it as a bird spot. I, I don't even want to go anywhere else. It's been, I, I did a account last year and I came up with 117 species. Some of the species, and I picked up some this year that I didn't get last year. Great horned owl I got this year. I didn't have last year. Golden crown kinglet of all things I got this year. Oh, another spot that I like is the confluence, the different confluences. Um, the confluence of the Topahawken Creek and the Schuylkill River is another nice spot for getting um, tree swallows, ruffling swallows, barn swallows, um, uh, swooping around, chimney swifts are swooping around. I saw an osprey flying up the river there at the confluence last week. Um, and I saw a peregrine falcon flying overhead. And I think he was just going somewhere else. I don't think it was one of the downtown peregrines. Um, and I can't forget Angelica Creek Park on the 18th and the 18th Ward. A lot of times we might forget that side of the that side of the city, you know, across the river. But Angelica Creek Park is just one of the great spots. And I always like to go down to the confluence of the Angelica Creek and the Schuylkill River and take a look around. I've had, you know, hooded merganser um, wood ducks um, there too. I've had ringneck ducks. Uh, interesting, interesting little spot. Bald eagles I've seen down there too. Um, so uh, there are I, I, I do want to recommend Angelica, especially if you're a new bird watcher, mm -hmm. because they'll just show off right in front of you. Yeah. Like all the birds there are easier to find. And yes, you can see bald eagles there. Yeah. So, I mean, there's no excuse for anybody in the city of Reading not, or even if you're not from the city of Reading, to come into the city of Reading and do some bird watching. Um, Angelica Creek Park is really accessible and has the, the trails and the boardwalks and it's just a really, really uh, fine place. And you know, the, you can take that one trail down along the river there for a little way and hook yourself back up to Brentwood there and, and come back around. It's just, you know, offers you so many uh, walking opportunities. But before I leave, I have to talk about the Baird Ornithological Club, which is celebrating its 100th anniversary this year. Now, the Baird Club was named for Spencer Fullerton Baird, who was born and ready in 1823. He moved later on to Carlisle. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can get this screen share here. Um, this is a story I'd written for the Historical Review. Um, I just, well, I'll just read this part and then, because Baird was so important. I mean, Baird is one of the guys and he was born in Reading. And, and it's one of those things that we don't appreciate sometimes of, of, the, the, of what we have or had in Reading. But um, I did a story on, on species named for Berks Countyans. Um, the undisputed leader, Berks leader and patron is Spencer Fullerton Baird, who was born in Reading in 1823 and rose to become, believe this or not, the second secretary of the Smithsonian Institution. He was one of the founders of the American Museum of Natural History. And he was one who built up the Smithsonian in a lot of ways. And if you go down to the Smithsonian, you'll see a bust of, you know, a statue dedicated to Spencer Baird. He later led the United States Commission of Fish and Fisheries and established the Marine Biological Research Station at Woods Hole, Massachusetts, where he died in 1887. Baird served the Smithsonian during the Great Westward Expansion equipped U.S. Army officers with the tools necessary to collect and preserve specimens of Western flora and fauna to send back to Washington. That was really important. His pioneering work with fisheries, perhaps his best known stuff, was honored by his fellow researchers with nearly 100 Baird patronyms. Over 100 species are named for Baird because of his importance of marine life, including Baird's beak whale, described in 1883. Baird himself named over 200 species. There are two Baird patronyms that stand out. As a youth, Baird maintained a lively correspondence with John James Audubon, 
after Baird sent him a specimen of a yellow-bellied flycatcher, a species new to science. I mean, Baird was a precocious kid, and he, you know, collected a specimen that was new to science, the yellow-bellied flycatcher, and sent it to Audubon. In return, Audubon named the Baird Sparrow, Amodramus Bairdii, a bird of the western prairies, in his honor. The Baird Sparrow is the last bird species described by Audubon. And if you looked in Audubon's Birds of America or, or saw the Audubon elephant portfolios, the very last bird species is the Baird Sparrow that Baird drew and named. So, you know, Baird Ornithological Club has a great, great tradition in Berks County. And it's still going on, and uh, you can go to the website or just Google Baird Ornithological Club Reading or uh, Brooks County and uh, get to the website and come to bird walks and come to meetings. And um, we're doing meetings by Zoom now, but hopefully by the fall, things will settle down. So thank you all for listening up and participating. And um, I hope I was able to, you know, teach you all something today. Thank you so much, Bill. This was really fascinating. And um, it's really cool to know how people from Reading and Berks just make such a great difference in our world. Uh, exactly. And those legacies last for how many generations um, now. Exactly. Um, I do want to thank everybody for participating. And this video will be available on our YouTube channel, which is uh, just do a search for Earth Day, Berks County. And um, that way you can share it with uh, classes and, um, and with friends. And, uh, and I hope everybody can get out this week and uh, enjoy our wonderful trails in the city and uh, see if, what they can find um, in, you know, with the birds and the bugs and all of our other ecological neighbors. Um, I did get to see a juvenile uh, bald eagle uh, hunting along the railroad tracks up at Public Works yesterday. Um, and so I'm going to keep looking for him uh, as he, he seems to be deciding that it's a good, pretty good hunting ground place. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they're, they're fun to watch. They're really uh, amazing creatures. Yeah. So thank you so much, Bill. And um, I'm going to stop the record. And uh, I hope everybody has a wonderful evening. And uh, thanks again for participating in Earth Day Berks Virtual 2021. And uh, remember, every day is Earth Day. And uh, have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye. <laughs>